Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be using my photograph here of the River Arran at Arundel in West Sussex as inspiration for a line and wash painting. I'm going to use my artistic license to make it into a summer picture with a lovely blue sky and as it's a line and wash I'm first of all going to go over my initial sketch, my pencil sketch, with waterproof fine liners. There's a full length three part tutorial for this painting over on my Patreon page. So please follow the link if you're interested. This will also contain the photograph and the pencil sketch and the line work to download and copy or trace if you like. Um, so as I say, follow the link below if you're interested in a more in-depth tutorial for this painting. So I'm working across my painting going, you know, following my sketch and putting in the outline and the darkest darks with my fine liner, um, with line and wash. Uh, the unpainted parts of the paper will give you a lightest light. The paint that I use later will give me mostly my mid-tones, but my darkest darks um, will be provided by my line work. It's a nice, easy, fresh way to paint, um, especially for beginners, as you can take your time getting the pencil sketch right first and then just going over it with ink will be right. And then the painting um, is fairly minimal. It's just putting in nice, clean washes and details into the drawing that we've already made. So it's a very approachable way of painting a landscape. So again, on the left, left bank, putting in the outline with the 0.8 um, Pigma Micron waterproof fine liner, and then putting in some shadows um, to really bring out the um, depth and distance and the, the 3D-ness of the painting um, with a Faber-Castell pit pen small chisel nib. So that's just about it for the line work. Um, leave it to dry completely, otherwise it might smudge. So now I'm going to paint the scene on Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper, 140 pounds. And I'm going to wet the sky all over um, and then paint the sky wet in wet. With my size 14 Escoda Ultimo synthetic mop brush, I'll wet the sky, then add a tiny touch of light red across um, the central part of the sky, thinning it out with the water. And then I'm going to go into my cobalt blue and paint the sky. For this painting, I'm using um, our Davidson's Pigments tube paints to paint this. Um, they're beautiful colours. If you're interested in purchasing any of our tube paints, please follow the link below to Morgana Rose Arts Etsy shop where we sell our small batch artisan handmade paints. Of course, if you want to follow along with this painting, you can use any brand or any colours of paint that you like. Now that I've got my sky painted i will now put a bit of the same color the light red and the cobalt blue using horizontal brush strokes um, across the water and this should give me a lovely light feeling of the sky reflected in the river Arran. And if any of the sky wash runs down across the top of the roofs, I can use a clean damp brush just to, uh, to remove that bead of water and paint. And now I need to leave that to dry completely before I can come back and carry on with painting it. So it's all nice and dry now. And so I'm going to mix up some of my um, Davidson's Pigments Cobalt Blue with some permanent yellow and a dash of burnt sienna as well um, in various shades of green on my palette. And then using my small calligraphy brush, I can begin to paint in my distant foliage 
using quite a watery mix of those colours so that it'll dry nice and pale and give me a sense of aerial perspective. I can use stronger paint as I come forward with my um, trees, bushes and foliage and grass and that way hopefully I can get some sort of a sense of depth and distance into my painting. I hope you can see the varying shades of green and the sort of colour blending that now is happening on the page and that gives a little bit more interest to that distant tree line. So I'm cutting around my buildings with my foliage and working forward um, with increasingly richer paint, getting in darker darks right at the foreground and filling in all those areas of foliage in these little gardens and yards that lead down to the riverbank. Again, I'm varying up my shades to add interest. And as I add these colours to my painting, they mix on the page wet in wet and soften and diffuse. And I end up with a really interesting um, foliage effect. You can see that I've just lightly glazed with um, green across the water to give the impression of some very light reflections on the river. And then onto the foliage um, in the foreground on the right. Again, cutting around the buildings. I can paint them in later. Using my large harky brush, I can quickly sweep in some colour and um, into the foreground and just create the path on the riverbank there, leading out of the picture. Something and nothing, not too much detail. So that's just about it for all the foliage and the riverbank path. Um, the next thing I want to do is let that dry completely and then come back and put in the buildings. So as soon as it's dry, then I can put in my buildings um, using the flat brush and I'm going to use um, light red and I'm going to temper the light red here and there with a bit of um, cobalt blue, maybe a bit of burnt sienna um, or burnt umber just to change it up a bit. But I'm going to very quickly put in my roofs using the flat brush and then the small calligraphy brush for any areas that are too small for me to fit the flat brush into. At this stage I'm not really watch, looking at the photograph anymore, the painting has taken on a life of its own so I am now balancing up the painting and putting different tones of roof and gable or wall according to how I think it's going to suit my painting. Remember, I'm not trying to do a photorealistic copy of the photograph. Um, I'm creating a painting with something of me in it and my choices and my thoughts and what I want to express. So I'm now using my artistic license to just balance the painting up um, with my own choices of colours for the buildings and the roofs. So I'm nearly finished. I think I just need to draw attention to these focal point buildings here by adding some lovely rich colour to the roofs around this white building and then adding a lovely red roof to the building itself and darkening up all around the white um, walls because that means the dark against the light will really help that area to show and because there's more detail in the line work in that area the eye is drawn towards that detail um, making it quite a nice subtle focal point. And now lastly, with a clean, damp, flat brush, I'm going to lift out a few slightly lighter lines, not many and nothing overt, into the water to help to flatten it out and just bring a little bit of sparkle to the river foreground. 
now that it's completely dry um, I think it's just about finished but let's take a look at it without the tape because seeing it in a with its clean white border helps us to look at it with fresh eyes and we can see if it needs anything else doing to it it's just a simple painting so I hope you enjoyed watching it come together and that you'll give something like this a go yourself now I'm looking at it, I think I'm going to take a tiny light glaze of very watery cobalt blue and just put a single brush stroke over that wall there. So just a very light glaze of cobalt blue and I think that just adds a little bit more sparkle and shadow to the focal point area. So here's the finished painting. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It costs nothing, uh, but it really helps with my reach. And if you're interested in any of our Davidson's Pigments handmade um, tube paints, please follow the link below. If you're interested in any of my paintings, also please follow the link below. And if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon and accessing hundreds of um, exclusive videos there and the three part tutorial for this one, follow that link too. Thank you so much and I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.